Hey viewers, thank you so much indeed for joining us on Get Well, Stay Well on Revelation TV. You're joined by me, Sai, and as always, delighted to be joined by lovely Felicity. How are you? Hi there, Sai. I'm absolutely fine. Looking forward to our program today, as I always do. And yeah. so this, this week I'm doing a program on chronic fatigue. Excellent. Because everyone, you know, who's writing to me, emailing and on Facebook, they're saying, we are so tired. This seems to be the, the problem, and it's been happening. I think our lives are racing on at such a such a pace, aren't they, with, mm. you know, the emails and the yeah. instant, instant reaction to everything. Mm. So uh, I think people are also eating the wrong foods as well. You know, they're drinking the water with the fluoride and chlorine in it, and they are, um, they're breathing the air that's very toxic as well. So really, there's every reason why people should be fatigued, but of course, they're working hard to try and provide for their families and you know the women are doing two jobs they're doing home and probably a job outside as well mm. so people are getting very very tired yeah so we have to find ways to detox and of course that's what my life's just, all about it's yeah. trying to prevent people getting so tired could you just define chronic fatigue what does that actually well, mean? well chronic is an ongoing thing you know you can either have a chronic illness which goes on a long time uh, or an acute illness that is much more serious and suddenly hits you. But a chronic thing goes on and on. And of course, this is where Big Pharma make a lot of money out of people who are chronically fatigued because they go on going back to the doctor for more and more pills and synthetic drugs and really looking for answers. And in the end, you know, we come back to God's word, size. We always say mm. on these programs, we come back to God's word. We come back to his creation diet, which is the fruit, the vegetable seeds, nuts, and the green plant. But you know, we've got new viewers all the time yeah. who are wanting to know what all this is about. So this is where my ministry comes from. It's based on God's word. And when I discovered that when we go back to the creation diet, we do actually feel much better. We start to regenerate cells. Yeah. So I started teaching this and uh, through various illnesses in our family and deaths in our family and my own grievous illness, you know, I, I really learned the hard way. We do need to detox from the modern sort of lifestyle, which has come really from America, I think. It's been an American thing, the, the new way of, um, you know, cooking and the um, artificial foods, I think, really started in America, like the artificial sugar, for instance, you know, instead of having the, the brown cane sugar that is the natural thing if you live in in uh, the tropics, um, you know, we started refining foods, we refined flour, sugars, salts, everything's been changed, it's been counterfeited. And so the body, actually, the cells in the body don't recognize these, these things as, as proper food. Mm. You know, it's a bit of an assault on the system, yeah. on the adrenal system. I mean, how important is research? We often talk about research mm. and we talk about finding out all this information for ourselves as well. Give us an example. How do you do your research, Felicity? Well, there's absolutely masses there. Of course, I go on the internet. I do read a lot as well. I order books that I think are going to be really good. Um, you know, you can download them. Um, you can also... I get some on Amazon because I actually like a book that I can get my hands on. I'm still, you know, I like to be able to mark the pages and and really study something. Yeah. Like um, Ilana Freeland's book, for instance, or Dr. Colin Campbell's book. Yes. Uh, books that are iconic, you know, they, they change the world. And of course, on the internet, you're getting a drift for, for what these new things are yeah. as they come along. And of course, the new films that are coming out now. We've got filmmakers now yes. who are coming out with such wonderful expositions, you know, mm. and exposing things like um, Ty Bollinger did with The Truth About Cancer. We've now had the one on the sacred plant. Uh, we've had I Thrive, which is about yeah. curing diabetes. We've got Joe think Cross. Is there more and more uh, interest becoming into the health in, in general? Are people more... Do they want more information on health and that's why they're producing so many of these films? Oh, yes. I think as people have got chronically fatigued and they've started to, you know, not feel well, I think that's when people start to get interested in actually mm. finding out why they're not feeling well. Okay. Well, let's have a look at our first video. And this is talking about 
chronic fatigue and chronic fatigue is something that we need to be thinking about we need to take care of our health and be aware and that's what revelation tv does we look to educate and inspire so let's have a look at this video now chronic fatigue i have seen in nutrition for many many years i must say is a lot of confusion you go and survey people you know outside of the science and ask them what do they think about nutrition is and you can hear all kinds of comments i eat this i eat that and this is good and this is not good there's also confusion in the professions. You know, medical doctors are not trained in this field. And there's confusion in my own field, you know, biomedical research. We don't get an opportunity to tell, you know, the real science, I think, the way it should be told, because we're overwhelmed with the corporate sector trying to sell stuff. We are living in extreme times where we have 27% of people dying of heart disease, 25% of cancer, 10% of stroke four or five percent from diabetes, the same number for Alzheimer's. I mean, these are, in many, many cases, diseases of nutritional ignorance and diseases that are all based on our lifestyle choices. There are a lot of different dietary theories out there, but I think one fact is kind of indisputable. Having a diet that is rich in whole plant-based foods is truly a great way to get you to good health. Everywhere I go around the world, there's not a single person I've met that doesn't know that fruits and vegetables are good for them. We all know it. It's not about the knowing, it's about the doing. There was a time when there was no heart disease, no colon cancer, no breast cancer, no multiple sclerosis, no inflammatory arthritis. Of course, these days in Asia, in the Middle East, in Central America, and around the world, people have become rich. They have uh, given up much of their starch and they replaced it with meat and dairy. Throughout history, Rich people, the royalty, the pharaohs, the queens, the kings, the priests, the priestess, the people could afford to eat the meat. They had artery disease, they had obesity, they were sick. Nothing's changed except for the number of kings and queens living in the world. A question kept coming to my mind. If plant foods are so good for us, and the consumption of animal products in excess appears to do us harm, how about the ancient populations of people that survived on diets based off mostly meat, eggs and dairy and appeared to be healthy? After all, aren't we known for being hunter-gatherers? All large successful populations of people have gotten the bulk of their calories from starch, rice, corn, potatoes and other starches, breads and so on. Particularly when you live near the equator, as you move north and south in latitude, then you end up eating more animal foods. And if you get far north, like for example, the Inuit Eskimos, they are largely carnivores because that's what's available. But that's a small population of people that exists on the extremes of the environment. That's the exception, not the rule. We have become the most successful species on this planet. No one comes close to us. We share it with animals and insects and microbes and plants, but we're number one. And the way we got to number one was all about survival. We see in color, I believe, because fruits and vegetables are colorful. Our hand is perfectly designed to pick, forge, grab, dig, peel, and feed ourselves. Fruits, vegetables, nuts, beans, and seeds, plant food, food made by Mother Nature. Excellent. That was Joe Cross there and a very, very interesting video we just saw on chronic fatigue. Felicity, can you tell us a little bit about the research that was carried out by Dr. Colin Campbell in relation to meat and dairy? Well, that was one of the books that I actually bought and really studied. Yeah. Dr. Colin Campbell wrote the China study, yes, which was a big study that he did. Um, he, he was brought up the son of dairy farmers like Caldwell Esselstein was, the cardiologist as well. So they both thought you know, meat and dairy were, was the best thing that you could possibly have. And they thought about these poor people in the East, in the Far East and Asia, who weren't getting enough protein. So they set out to prove that they needed protein. And Colin Campbell actually went out to the Philippines to start with. And he started introducing um, children to having meat and dairy. And soon he discovered that, in fact, their health deteriorated. Wow. So he was thinking there's something very strange going on here. 
they started getting the diseases that the kids in the in in the West had got. So um, they did more and more studies, and they discovered in the end that we are having too much protein, definitely, right. and so that the um, you know the 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 way of having rice and vegetables and fruits and seeds and nuts and green plant, which we think of as poor food, yes. in fact, is the best food are we that going we can to have. See, are we going to see a full circle on the nutrition, yeah. the way we're staying healthy? Because we look to our grandparents of how healthy they were, the nutrition that they were eating, and then we had the last several decades of mm. eating processed foods, lots of meat, dairy, mm. sugars, fats, and everything else. So now all of a sudden we're coming back to seeing these amazing documentaries which are available for us. So people are becoming more and more educated in nutrition and therefore maybe looking for the next generation will be a more healthier generation. What do you think? Well, I think so. I think the last probably 30 years, 40 years, we flirted with, um, you know, the counterfeit foods and, the count and changing the water and doing all kinds of things to the, the air, for instance. We have changed our world dramatically what was what, what at what stage did all the processed foods and, and the such dramatic changes start taking place where was the turning point I think World War two probably when uh, the men were away at war the women started um, to have to look after the you know the land girls who, yes. who grow the food yeah <laughs> um, women started to have to go out to work to keep the family because the men weren't there yeah so uh, women started to need um, to make life easier for themselves. So mm. the TV dinners, the washing machines, all these things came in and it was basically from America. Mm -hmm. All these wonderful, we all thought, you know, how wonderful the innovations. Yeah. You weren't standing there, you know, with your arms in the, in the suds doing all the washing up that you actually put things in a machine and yeah. they washed them for you. Yeah. So we had that sort of thing. We had the food changed as well. I remember the little TV dinners, the little fish pies and the things that you could stick in the microwave. Yeah. You know, Lord help us, because the microwave yeah. we now know is so dangerous. Well, what is it about the microwave that is dangerous? Are we talking only, only ready-made meals? Because so many of our viewers, I'm sure, still use a microwave today. So why is it so dangerous? Sure, because it radiates the food. It actually kills the living enzymes. I certainly used it. I thought it was wonderful. You know, so you could cook the baked potatoes, Si, and in a few minutes, instead of two hours in the oven sort of thing. Yeah. So all these quick fixes we've used, and you see we come back to living life a, a more natural way, and we now find that people are getting better that way. So when they come back to not a vegan diet, because a vegan diet could be baked beans on toast, and we know that that's not, yes. that's not gonna give yes. us the living enzymes. Mm. But coming back to God's diet, and you know it, we do come back to God, and this is why I love being on Revelation TV because we can talk about the goodness of God and how he's provided for us, you know, Jehovah mm. Jireh, our provider. Yeah. And he really is, and he has provided everything for us. So we're talking about changing our diets, changing the, the way that we're eating, stop, uh, stop eating or removing uh, processed foods from our diets, and maybe going on to the Daniel diet. And so, for example, mm. we're using uh, juicing as a fantastic mm. example. Tell us yeah. about the benefits of juicing. Well, the thing about juicing is really that you break down the, the fiber uh, before it has to go into the body. Right. So in fact, if people are not very well and they, they've got poor digestion, as a lot of people have yeah. now, it's much easier for them to assimilate that goodness into the body. But of course, it's good for you to have the fiber as well. So if people are fit, then better to actually chew the carrot Yes. Than, than juice it, but of course you can't chew 30 carrots. Yes. But you can juice 30 carrots and, and drink them down. What is the amount, what is the quantity of juices we should be having? Should we be having one a week, once a day? What is the ideal quantity? Well, the Gerson therapy goes for about 15 a day, you know, but that, that's a full-time job. And that's if you're obviously, you're, you're trying to overcover um, yes, something. Yes, like. yes, if people are really ill and they sure. go somewhere like that and the juices are made for them. But for ordinary mortals, you know, if we get a few juices in a day, what a good thing that would be. <laughs> so we, we, you know, it's not all the perfect world. We have to think how we can adapt from our lives at the moment. For instance, I have a probably two or three juices a day, certainly start with one and finish with one. So we're still talking about chronic fatigue and we're going to be moving on to something called Morgellons disease. Is that right? Morgellons, yeah, this is something yeah. new. And Morgellons disease is a skin disease where the little fibers that are going out and the nanoparticulates that are you know, in the air now 
are actually getting into our bodies through the lungs and they're coming out like little filaments, little fibers through the skin. Right. And this has been happening the last 20 years probably. And to begin with, people couldn't work out what it was. They've now given it a, a name, Morgellons, but basically it means a pollution in the body that's trying to come out. So you'll see pictures of the little tweezers pulling yes. these little wires that are wiggling yeah. out wow. of people's skin. Yeah. So, um, Interesting. Okay, well, let's have a look at this. This is more Gellin's disease. Be the list of symptoms is extremely long. It's almost similar to like a fungal and a fungal overload, pathogenic overload. And there's so many related uh, symptoms. Uh, the key, some of the more prominent ones being the body actually growing these fibrils or hairs uh, the body producing artifacts of some kind, uh, that whether they're uh, some people, I've even met a couple of people that are producing plant-like material growing out of their skin. Um, there's actually these uh, non-earthling type of insects being uh, come out of their body. I mean, unbelievable stories that I would never have believed it unless I was standing in their, in, in their house witnessing this. The second group of materials found in these environmental samples is unidentifiable fibers. And I really want you to appreciate the meaning of unidentifiable. These fibers have been sent to sophisticated laboratories and there is nothing, nothing in the databases that match them. These are fibers, we could say, that do not exist in nature. People around the world are developing lesions on their skin that ooze and produce fibers. This is known as Morgellon syndrome. Tissue samples cultured from ordinary people without this ailment contain and grow the very same fibers. When these fibers are cultured, they produce colonies of filaments. You can see the extension filaments. And these colonies continue to grow and reproduce, branching out into more filaments and more colonies. The filament cultures can be grown from saliva samples, tissue from the skin, mucus, urine, blood, from animals and people, regardless of the presence of the Morgellons condition. So where do these fibers or filaments come from? Airborne environmental samples that were collected by Clifford Carnicom in 2000, the year 2000, gathered at high altitude on a mountain in New Mexico showed the presence of those fibers whose structure matches exactly the tubular filaments showing up in our blood, tissues, and skin. Additionally, the samples collected by Mr. Carnicum showed what he calls, and was called in biology, desiccated erythrocytes. This is a multisyllabic term, but it means dried red blood cells. So, why are dried red blood cells in the air? You could say that this woman, who does not want her real name used, is in the grasp of something she has no control of. It opens up her body, which oozes and bleeds, followed by great pressure, agonizing pain, and then the release of stuff. This, for instance, is on her shoulder. As a giant lesion on her lower body began to close, a new one opened up on her shoulder. It's as though the condition must express itself must manufacture its stuff. There we go. Thank you so much. That's Morgulin's disease. So, Felicity, how do we, how do we prescribe, um, how do we know if we have Morgulin's disease? Morgulin's, right. It's um, itching usually on the skin and a feeling of uh, something sort of creepy, crawly, you know, around, around the skin. It's extraordinary. And also people get very tired, they get, um, you know, brain fog and all kinds of different problems. But mainly it, it is a skin thing. And, um, you know, doctors have now, they, they do realize it's a syndrome and that people are getting it. A lot of people in America, children are coming out with it and mm -hmm. adults. And I think if you're out in the fresh air more, probably... You know, these things will come out, but you are breathing them in in the first instance. They're not going in through the skin. So They're how coming do... out through the skin. And how do we prevent it? What do we do? Well, basically, if you're in a polluted area, you wear masks. You know, if you see there's a lot of spraying and chemicals going on, 
uh, you keep well out of the way, which is um, difficult to do when you're leading an ordinary life. Yes. But um, as we know, in Brazil, there have been huge problems from spraying, and all around the world, there have been uh, you know, more and more people have come out with these strange symptoms. We never used to have these sort of diseases, you know, mm -hmm. before we had um, we had different diseases that were basically from bad hygiene, mm. but now it's got very sophisticated, our hygiene is better, but our pollution is much worse. So How important is it that we detox and just remove all the toxicity from our bodies? It's the only answer, Si, it oh. really is the only answer, and you know, it's interesting, I'm talking to people on the phone consultations, New Zealand, you know, wonderful Maori people who wow. are in yeah. touch with me, I was speaking to them last night and I have another consultation uh, in New Zealand uh, this weekend, and people from all over the world, because once you start uh, talking about this, you know, detox at a really high level, then people are really interested to know how to get well, because if you go to the doctor, you know, explaining that you've got little bits coming out of your skin, they'll, they'll wonder what on earth's going on until they actually test it. And like the NHS are not going to bother to do that, basically. Mm. So um, it's, it's something that needs to be addressed and we need to know that these things are going on and that they're genuine. Now, you constantly speak to people from all over the world, don't you? And, yes. and what, is, what is the feedback that you're receiving in compared to the different nations and the medical system there? Then maybe um, are there health scares in certain countries more than others? I think probably America uh, is more polluted. I think, it, I think it is worse in America and very closely second with UK. Um, in the Scandinavian countries, they've been much more into detox and prevention of disease mm. for a long time, you know, in Scandinavian countries and Germany. People have been much more into natural medicine. Mm. Hungary, for instance, they've got a Gerson Institute in, in Hungary and in Mexico, in the places that aren't completely controlled by, by Big Pharma, okay. then uh, you have more natural medicine, like the Maoris, the Aborigines, yeah. will come out with their natural, tried and trusted remedies. Excellent. So we're talking about staying healthy, and a delicious way of staying healthy is preparing a delicious smoothie. And today, Dr. Mark Hyman is going to show us how to do that. Let's have a look at this now. Hi, I'm Dr. Neha, and this is my colleague and friend, Dr. Mark Hyman, and we're here in New York, and we are going to make a smoothie together. Mark has been one of, he's not only my doctor, but he's also someone who's really influenced me in the kitchen and starting to get myself making... Got her in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> that is true, actually. Um, but he's made it so simple and easy that um, I've actually taken this big leap to bring you here and do it together. Awesome. You know, breakfast is so key. Most of us skip it because we're busy, we're out of the house, but We've created some amazing recipes in the Blood Sugar Solution 10 Day Detox Diet Cookbook that you can make in a flash that are full of super powerful ingredients that help you feel good and actually create health and easy weight loss. Awesome. So let's, what, if, what if we do the creamy berry smoothie? I love the creamy berry smoothie. You know, you think you need cream to make it creamy? Well, I've got a secret ingredient that'll make it creamy. So let's go through it and make the smoothie. Great. So you can use ice cubes if you're using fresh fruit. We have some frozen fruit. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the strawberries. They're frozen strawberries. And we're going to double this recipe so we can both have some. Yeah. All right. So we're going to start with strawberries. Well, I don't like sharing. <laughs> <laughs> I want to eat it all. And there's half a and, cup. Yeah. And berries are amazing. They're full of antioxidants. The darker the color, the pigment in food, the better it is for you. It's full of powerful healing polyphenols and it's all kinds of big words you don't need to remember. All you remember is it tastes good, it's sweet, and it's delicious, and it makes you feel good. And here's the raspberries as well, frozen raspberries. And here's a super, super secret creamy ingredient next. Right What here. is that, Neha? So it's silken tofu. Yes, it's non-GMO, organic silken tofu, which is really creamy. It's great for smoothies. It's full of protein, super low in sugar, and it actually keeps your blood sugar even, your brain functioning well all day. And we doubled that, so that was eight ounces of silken tofu. And now, here's some more protein, this is, right? This is hemp protein. Hemp protein is a special protein. It's not the kind of hemp you smoke. It's the kind of hemp that you eat, and it's actually full of powerful uh, omega-3 fats that are healing and anti-inflammatory, as well as minerals and fiber and protein. So it's a great food. And then we top it off with a little... Fresh squeeze. Fresh lime squeeze. Juice. Lime juice. Why fresh squeeze? Because it tastes better than that fake, gross stuff you can get in the bottles. And it gives a little tang and a little 
super taste. It makes, makes it really yummy. And so it takes out that weird soy thing that you can sometimes get with the soy flavor. And I'm just going to throw in a couple ice cubes. A couple ice cubes. So, Mark, I was wondering, when I made this, yeah. um, it was a little bit thick for me. Yeah. And I'm wondering, can I like be creative? Absolutely. You know, some people like it thick, some people like it thin. Okay. And you can adjust the ingredients for your preference. You can okay. take out or add. If you want blackberries instead of raspberries, if you want, you know, other kinds of protein powder. What about almond use... milk? Can I just add some almond milk? Almond milk is great. I know okay, you, you actually great. made I some, some of your own, which is full of good fats yep. and protein and fiber. So we'll just put a little in there. Great. And Love it. A little smoothier and a little creamier. Great. And then we got to get. And what setting do you use? I use a smoothie setting because it starts slow and then it builds up. Great. Awesome. Easy. So you can check out the it. Blood Sugar Solution 10 Day Detox Diet Cookbook. Get all sorts of recipes and actually food that's going to help you feel good, lose weight, and help your brain work better. Yeah. Here we go. Delicious, healthy recipe there. Thank you so much indeed for introducing that. Felicity, we're coming towards the end of today's program. Is there anything else our viewers need to be aware of when we're talking about health? Well, with chronic fatigue, you know, the best thing is to get back to the earth, to start walking on the beach, start walking on the lawn, just getting barefoot and absolutely connecting with Mother Earth again, which we're supposed to be doing. We're all living in flats high up in the air yeah. and uh, work, you know, concrete floors. So we need to make that connection again. And it's amazing how the electrical charge in our body comes back into harmony when we get the frequency right, which is the Schumann resonance. And people can have a look for Schumann resonance. It's really interesting. Excellent. Thank you so much indeed for yeah. today's program, Felicity. And of course, you've got a website as well, haven't you, if you just want further information? Yes, it's HippocratesInEurope.com. Excellent. Felicity, thank you so much indeed. Thank you also to our lovely viewers for joining us today. I hope today's program has been interesting for you. If you found it interesting, then feel free to share it. Check us out on our website, revelationtv.com, where you see the catch-up service. We're also on a broad range of uh, social media platforms, so you can tune in on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Just simply type Revelation TV. I want to say thank you so much indeed for joining us today. I hope today's program has been interesting. We're here to inspire and educate and encourage you as well. And also just want you to walk with the Lord Jesus Christ and have Jesus Christ in your life. No matter what, you can always overcome anything when Jesus Christ is in your life. Thank you so much indeed. Take care, God bless, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.